Hello everybody, I am Jeffrey Hauser. I'm going to be talking about AngularJS, and this is kind of an AngularJS for flux developers and censuses and flux scores. So before I go into that, I want to, who am I? What gives me the right to be up here preaching? Um, most people know me from the Flux Show. Uh, it was a podcast for flux developers. I also had a set of commercial UI components, now open source components called Flexers. And um, but these days the bulk of my business is consulting. Um, so I also did a lot in the community. If you've ever asked a Flex question on Stack Overflow, there's a good chance to answer it. I'm an Adobe community professional formally, and um, I'm also one of the PMC members of the Apache Flex project. Um, I actually just finished, just released a training course, AngularJS for Flex Developers. So it's a bunch of books, a bunch of screencasts. The books are actually available for no cost. Um, if you want to get any of the higher tiers with screencasts and a bunch of extra articles, there is a discount code up on the screen. So lifeafterflex.com. And uh, that's it for self-promotion. Let's, let's talk about this specific presentation. So this is what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about a little what AngularJS is and why we care. We're going to talk about modules and controllers and what they are in the context of AngularJS applications. Um, we're going to talk about the Angular scope service, which is used for what is essentially binary in the HTML world versus uh, the Flex world. And then we're going to create our Angular service, um, talk about how to connect to a backend, and finally we're going to talk about components and UI libraries. And this this is uh, this really is intended as a beginner's course for Angular JS, but I will be drawing in sort of flex parallels and experience as we need to. If you have any questions, just sort of raise your hands or scream out. Question already? Go ahead. What do you mean by Angular What is Angular What do you need? Why do you need it? Uh, well, if you don't, if you want to build browser-based applications, really Angular JS is an option. And I think it's a great option for um, for Flex developers. And ho hopefully this uh, presentation will give you give you a good overview of that. So what and that brings me into sort of the first slide here. What is AngularJS? AngularJS is a JavaScript slash HTML5 framework. I'm doing air quotes in case you can't see on the video. Uh, so it's really an extensive HTML DOM, the document object model. And adds new attributes, um, Angular attributes, and it's that, and it's also a dependency injection framework. So it's a clear separation of uh, code, business logic, which is written in JavaScript, and the view code, which is really written in HTML. Now, very similar to the separation we see in Flex, where ActionScript is is used for a lot of the business logic, and MXML is really used for a lot of the display code. And another tenet of AngularJS was, it's built to be testable, to be easily testable. And uh, we won't go into any details on how to test it, but just just to know that uh, it, in terms of JavaScript frameworks that I've looked at, it's very easy to test. And that was one of the priorities when building it. So um, language is used. Um, in Flex, of course, we have MXML, ActionScript, and CSS. And in the HTML Irish world, we have HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. The CSS is different between the two of them, but um, in HTML5, it's really used for the layout and a lot of things, even more so than the Flux world. In the Flux world, we have usually containers for layout and such, but um, in HTML5, it's all, uh, it's, it's really all comes out of CSS for layout specifics. So, what do we need to do to create an AngularJS application? Um, I have a very simple, almost empty HTML page up here on the screen. And the, the one item we want to take a look at is this script tag. And that is basically the, the JavaScript version of an import. And what it does is it imports the AngularJS library. Here, um, I'm actually loading a local library. But uh, a lot of people, when they're pushing things into production, um, the libraries are hosted on Google's content literary network, so they'll actually use an absolute URL to download the library from, from Google. And the benefit of that is very similar in the Flex world, the benefit we got from using those Swiss files when we were creating release builds, where the Swiss files could be cached by the Flash player across different domains, and then that was less not bundled into our application, and um, basically our, made our application size smaller. So by using uh, the script, the Angular library that's on the Google Content Delivery Network, in 
theory, our application users may already have it downloaded, and that's unless they actually have to download it to get our application up and running. So, but just importing the Angular application, the Angular framework, doesn't really do anything at yet. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an AngularJS module. And this is basically a defined memory space. It defines the, the piece of HTML code that is our application. Um, it really parallels the Flux application tag with one minor difference is that the, in a Flux app, the application tag, um, there's only one per app. Whereas in an HTML page, you can have many different Angular modules going around, all with discrete functionality, which may even be separate and may not be related in any way whatsoever. So um, the Angular module defines aspects of the application, like configure, configuration stuff, directives, controllers, services, factory. We'll, we'll talk a little about um, most of these throughout this application. Uh, so this is code that sets up our very first Hello World Angular module. Um, take a look at the, the sort of blue code at the bottom first. Um, we create a JavaScript variable called Hello World, and then it's equal to something. And Angular, that is a reference to the Angular framework, which is available to us because we have the Angular uh, framework imported. Then we're pulling the module function on this Angular, uh, Angular object. And the module function accepts two arguments. The first argument is the string, and that string is the name of the application. The second argument is an array of basically configuration parameters. Um, in this case, we're not actually specifying any configuration parameters, so we just have an empty array. But um, that's how we create an Angular module. And then if you look up to the body tag, you see the ng app directive. This is the directive that basically tells Angular JS that basically the body tag is the root of our Hello World application. And the, uh, the value of ng app is the same value, um, it is case sensitive, similar to the Flux language that the name of the module is. So it sort of ties to ties the two together. And we can put this ng app on any tag. It could be on the HTML tag, it could be on the div tag. Um, I chose the body for simplicity in this case. Um, let's see. Next we're going to need a controller. Um, I will eventually get to running code samples uh, once we get through this uh, basic, basic stuff. So the AngularJS controller is really the place for business logic. Um, or JavaScript code inside the Angular application. And it's attached to the DOM with an edgy controller. And that controller is going to have to be sort of embedded inside of that um, ng app view. So we're creating a controller here. Uh, let's look at the bottom part first. So we reference the hello world variable, which is the Angular module, and we're pulling the controller function on it. And the controller function is accepting two arguments very similar to the module function that was on the Angular framework that we just looked at. On the first argument is the name of the controller. In this I did HD controller for Hello World controller. And then the second argument is really an array of options. The controller is actually a function. So we could just put a function here, but instead I'm giving it an array, which is really Angular's dependency injection framework. So the last element of the array is uh, excuse me, the last element of the array is the actual uh, controller function. But before that we have an array of strings and it could be some indeterminate amount of strings. And here I only have one. I have something called scope, which we'll look at in a second. And this Angular looks at this string and then it looks for an angular um, an angular service that is of the same name and it passes that into the arguments of the function. So in this case, the scope service is being passed into the controller function as the scope variable, the dollar sign first. That usually is used to distinguish that this is an Angular specific function or service. So what is the scope service? Is the scope service is an Angular specific service, and it is used to share data between view code, which is really HTML code, and the controller, which is our JavaScript code. 
So in the controller, we'll just add values to the scope service. Um, here I have a sample, just scope dot value equals value, and it's a string. But it could be a number, it could be an object, it could be a function. You can really store anything you want in the scope service. And then to display out the view, um, to display our string in the view, we're using double curly bracket notation. So it's almost the same as flex. The syntax flex uses for binding, which is a single curly bracket, except here uh, we use two instead of one. So now we're almost to the point where we can actually run code. So this is um, actually, I don't know if there's too much to elaborate on than what I didn't already say. So inside the controller function, we, uh, we create the hello variable and give it a value of a string called hello. And then inside the controller's div, we're outputting it using the double curly bracket notation and the name of the scope variable. Uh, so, so then this is actually the code, everything we've looked at thus far. Where is uh, the JavaScript first? So we create the hello world variable and it creates the Angular module. Uh, the name hello world and we're passing in no options into it. And then we create the controller on it, which is named W controller. Um, Angular will look for the scope service and pass that as an argument into the controller function. And then inside the controller function, we create a uh, variable named hello in the scope, and it's a value of the string hello. And then in HTML, in the view code, we have png app reference hello world, which is the same item, or the same name as the module. And then ng controller references the w controller, which is the name of the controller, and it outputs the value. So, so, so this is basically all we've done so far. And um, I have Chrome up and Chrome developer tools at the bottom. And this is just so you can see there's no errors. Um, and this, all this does is print hello to the screen. So I, there's not much collaboration there. So does anyone have any questions so far? Is everybody with me? Good. Go, ask away. <clears throat> Okay, AngularJS browser support. I'd have to look it up. I think there's issues if you're using IE8 or earlier. Um, so there's just a few things to take into consideration. Um, it does work in IE8. Um, I think you have to add some extra. If the, there, there's actually a document on the Angular website about it, but I don't remember what it is on the top of my head. But um, I, I, I've tested it in all full modern browsers, so I've tested it. Um, uh, whatever, the latest version of IE, the latest version of Chrome, the latest version of Firefox, and Safari, and I've never had any issues with anything working. So, but, um, backward compatibility, I'm not really sure. Uh, yes, yes, I have done it, but yes, you can, you can use Angular with TypeScript and, and other languages like that. So, but, um, I have actually. Any other questions? <laughs> okay. So displaying something to the screen is interesting, but it, in most applications, you're going to want to collect some form of an input from a user at some, some point. And the way we can do that, we use what is called the NG model directive, which is an Angular directive um, that can be put on really any input. So here I have it on the text input. and um, it's just input type text and the engine model is equal to some variable inside the scope. So, uh, and this, this is sort of how, how binding works. So when we change values by typing into this text input, it's also going to change the value inside the, uh, inside the scope variable, which will in turn change where we're outputting the scope variable to the screen. So, um, so this is the code. Uh, one minor modification to our code, for example, too, which we just oh, sorry, we just add this uh, in, 
input type text, and its ENG um, model is references that hello variable, which is inside the R So Sample two, I won't really go through this because really just the one new line in the sample. But there we go. Hello, Hello 360 Flex. So as we type, Angular is working behind the scenes. It's doing its magic. It automatically knows to through the ng model directive to change that scope variable. And as the scope variable change changes, it knows to change the output. So um, <coughs> let's go back to the slide. Does everybody understand that? Everybody still with me? Any questions? Okay. So we've put a value in the scope. Uh, we can also put a, a function in the scope, or a method really, of JavaScript functions. Um, and there's various Angular directives that are very similar to events in the Flex world, like keyboard events, click events, um, change events. And any of those can trigger a function the, which is in our Angular controller. So what I've done here is I've created a reset function, which uh, is basically scope.reset equals function. So we're creating a function and saving it as a variable in the scope. And it just defaults that, that scope variable will go to its default value there. And then the uh, then we have a button up top in the HTML2, which uh, we use ng-click, and it calls the reset. So let's yeah, so once again, here's the function. And here is the button with the ng-click. So let's go to sample. And if I click reset, everything automatically goes back to hello. So, like I said, we have event listeners in essence on keyboard events or mouse click events or double click events. Or, and sometimes directives have, directives have their own custom events too. So, everybody with me? Any questions yet? Go with Ask. For the other libraries that you use, for JavaScript libraries, uh, is this one the best in your opinion? Um, yes, I believe Angular is the best I've used. I spent about two months with jQuery and found it very scattered and random and sort of tough to follow. That was really just my impression. I spent um, just under a week with Backbone and just seemed to have trouble getting anything to work. It just didn't really make sense for me. And um, just tons of people on my Twitter feed were just raving about Angular and how great it is. So I checked it out, and everything just clicked like that. Like everything seems so simple, elegant, from my perspective. So it just made a lot of sense. <laughs> bootstrap is different. So Bootstrap is really a really a style. So it's really a CSS framework, a CSS library, whereas Angular and jQuery are really the JavaScript frameworks. Um, there's actually a project called UI Bootstrap, which um, makes it really easy to use Bootstrap components in the context of Angular. Um, we'll get to that at the very end. And so, but not really the examples, just sort of high level. Yes. 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 But, well, it, it does. Do, I, I would say it does do the view part too, but it does not come. Angular does not come with a component library. One of, one of the things you have with Flex is we have this huge UI component library with so many options, and also even you know go beyond. There's tons of open source or commercial components out there for Flex. With Angular, the, specifically HTML5, we have a very tight, very plain UI component library. There's really just the HTML, which is a button, a select box, a text input, text area. Um, but it, it doesn't get very uh, comprehensive in terms of what's available to us. 
And Angular does not provide us any kind of library, but there are options out there, um, which, which I'm sort of jumping around, so <laughs> it's okay. Um, and uh, yeah, there are options out there. Um, Bootstrap is one, and there's a UI Bootstrap project, which makes Bootstrap really easy to use in the context of Angular. There are others. There's um, I've done a bunch with something called the Engine Grid, which is an HTML5 data grid built to use Angular, which actually has just about everything you want from the West Data Grid. It has things like cell templates, which are dynamic renderers. It has um, column sorting and such. Um, it makes use of renderer recycling, which is so only what's on the screen is rendered and not. So if you have to drag up data grid and only five rows on the screen, it's only rendered five rows on 100 rows. Um, so it's really Really awesome. It's really flexible grid, um, and we'll probably have time for probably have this now. But I'm digressing a bit. Um, Node.js is really basically a server platform. Um, a lot of people use it, and there's tools built on Node.js for um, for development purposes. So like a lot of people use it to, almost like as part of their build process, to automatically run tools such as unit testing or um, JavaScript minimizers as part of development. And so as you automatically change code, it automatically runs that and creates a release build for you that you can test. That's what most people use Node.js for in the context of building HTML5 applications. It's a completely separate topic than Angular though, so I'm not really gonna go into anything Um, these are all alternatives to class. Everything I'm, I'm talking about today is related to alternatives to class. So, that's kind of what you just said. One of the things you're flexible Here, C1 and C2. 
both of them are passing a shared model of service into the function and saving it to the scope variable. And then in the HTML code, we're going to have two different controllers. We're basically taking our previous examples and kind of splitting it up into different controllers. Controller two is just going to output the value, and controller one is going to use the text input to change it. Um, and I want to look at the code here because I actually split the code up. I actually created a third controller too to add the reset button on here. So um, here's the reset function here. And then controller one is just storing it. Controller two, unless I'm not storing uh, the shared model into the scope of my main controller three. And then our three controllers, the first one has the text input, which binds to the shared model object.pipe and the second one outputs it, and then the third one just puts the one on the reset. So my shared value of the world increases complex. So we we type in the first controller and it changes the service, which automatically does is update the display value in the second controller. And when we click the reset button, it changes the same service object, which clears out the values in both controller one and controller two. Is everybody with me there? Any questions? Um, I'm not actually sure. Usually, well, yes you can. Usually you don't do that with a service. A service is usually confined to a single module. Usually when you're doing that, um, you're, you're creating a module, you're passing it into another module as a parameter in that sort of configuration array. Right? And, um, and then when you're using that module, one module inside the other module, you're usually, uh, there's usually some defined API. So, such that, like, um, sort of like MQ Click or, or MQ Model, except something you've created yourself as part of the direct API. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, because uh, directives and, and doing that stuff like that can get very complex, so I actually left it, it would almost be a presentation on its own, so, so I left it out this than passing mention at the end, or maybe the middle right now. Uh, so let's talk about HTTP services, because most of the time when you're building an application, you, you're going to need to integrate with the service package, at least when you're building something enterprising. Um, so Angular provides a service called the HTTP service, and it's really a wrapper around the browser's XML HTTP request object. And this is the object that's sort of made JSON, or not JSON, it made it HTML possible, or um, Ajax, that's the new term. And, uh, and this HTTP object has a lot of helper methods to make it really easy to use this XML HTTP request to get data, to make it false to the server and get data back, and this will get closed in JSON P, and um, any sort of HTTP request you want to make. And um, put, Anyway, so I've created a service. I'm traditionally a full fusion developer, so I've written full fusion to create a service, and I created a really simple service. So the endpoint is test service. It has two inputs, um, num1, num2, and there's a method which is uh, named sum, this is sort of a full fusion thing, which says at this endpoint, execute this method, because you can have multiple methods in that point. And then the output is the sum of the two inputs, which is num1. So um, I wasn't going to show the actual full fusion code unless you guys really want to skip. But um, if you do, we'll get to that in a second. So let's focus on the Angular piece here. So we're taking, we're creating a new HTTP test module, um, and we're creating a new controller on that, the HTTP controller. The, uh, we have two values passed into on that controller, um, scope, which we've seen before, and HTTP. And uh, I create a 
bunch of variables. Actually, let me just show this in code where one piece of squeeze and that is on the slide. <coughs> so, HTTP test. Um, the uh, application, or module rather, then we create the controller, passing the scope variable, HTTP service. We're creating three values in the scope here. Um, number one, number two, and result. Number one and number two are going to be the arguments into the service, and result will be the results returned from the service. So we do we have a calculate function, which will be triggered by a button UI, and it'll create a, a parameter string. So um, I assume you have all have done enough HTML development to know what a, a parameter string is in your program or something in URL. So it's num1 equals the scope variable one, num2 equals the other scope variable, and uh, method equals the sum. Then we do this HTTP get, which is where we can get request to the server. So we call our, our service URL with the parameter string at the end. And then we have this sort of dot notation here, dot success, and on some success. So, and on some success is the method that's called. So, basically, it's when we get a successful result from the server, we call this on some success method. When there's an error from the server, we call this on the error method. So, let's look at the error method first. Um, in this case, all I'm doing is um, logging the failure. This is something that will show up in the console, uh, the web developer console. We also learn user if we wanted to want to do something web based. Um, four, four arguments into this uh, function, um, both the on error and the on success functions. Uh, data, which is the data returned from the server. Uh, status, which is sort of the status code returned from the server in relation to this call. Um, and then the headers and the key and the uh, we're not specifying the config in the name of the call, but if we were, we could do that. And the on some success has the same arguments as the function. And uh, I'm doing some logging there for debugging purposes. What we really care about is we're saving this data uh, that's returned from the server into the results function, or results value in the scope. That's the HTML view here. So uh, we have an input box for number one, an input box for number two a button to call the calculate. And finally, we we'll display the results. So let's look at this running. Did everybody follow me in this part of the code here? Ask me. Question on the most simple bottoms of JavaScript is the right to the bottom, or is the bottom? Um, I'm not understanding the question. I think what doesn't matter is like where the script is. So use the script. Okay, yes. It's considered a best practice to put the script at the bottom because if you put it at the top, it has to load all those script tags and JavaScript stuff before um, the page is basically rendered. So you put it at the bottom so the page can be loaded and rendered first. So it's considered a best practice. Now, most of the time in the context of AngularJS, I'm building basically single page applications um, similar to what we do. So I don't know if it really makes a difference in this case. Um, but because until the AngularJS framework and libraries are loaded, there's really nothing that's going to be loaded in HTML. Now, for most of the real applications I've been building, um, for these samples, it probably doesn't, doesn't really matter. And, um, but it's still it's considered a best practice to put it in the bottom for that reason. And, it, and I mean, this, this sort of predates all HTML file for all the web apps. But um, yeah, it's, uh, when I started writing my book, I was doing it at the top. My tech editor used to remind me of it. So there we go. Um, yeah, so, so basically, um, we can put whatever value we want in here. Uh, so 104,000, and we calculate the sum. It's going to make a remote call to the service, which is going to take the inputs. Send back the data, which is displayed out to the user. So, 
that is how we integrate with in a, in a simple way, we integrate with the CPP service. Now this of course can get a lot more complicated. Um, so, so the services can handle objects, the arrays, and whatnot. And how you do that is a bit different depending on what service service app language you're using. But for this purpose, I kept the example simple. So any other questions? Um, now, that, that's actually the last of my code samples, and this is the component part that I already touched on later earlier, so uh, it, it really reflects how the rich UI components. But in the game, you know, it's, it's very unique. There's a lot of sort of libraries to help fill the gap. And um, so, so I put together a table of various options, what we have to flex, what sort of their needs and development component parts are. Um, I, I think it might be more interesting Instead of staring at the table, let's go. So this is the actually application that I built in my book. So it's really two parts. I built an application in Flex, then I rebuilt the same application in Android, and that really gives us a direct side by side comparison of what we want to build. So this is a task manager application, and I wanted to touch on a lot of the things we build for enterprise clients. So there's a login with different roles, two roles, a tasker role, and a creator role. The tasker role can do everything. It can create new tasks, edit tasks, schedule tasks, or tasks completed, where the creator role can create tasks, but cannot edit tasks. So I'll um, log in. Close this down here. So this is this is the application. It's really squeezed at this resolution. But so the top part is a filtering bar. Um, so quite a filter based on task categories or specific dates, like created dates, categories. Well, there's a date picker here, which uses UI to bootstrap. And, um, sort of uh, the data grid, there's a completed property which is a cell render, a display checkbox in the data grid. And then, and then it's to run the code. Just by clicking this, we can mark the task completed. And go back to completed. And you see that right here. Once again, this is a piece of the UI bootstrap track library. So, task created by um, UI bootstrap is an Angular specific version of Twitter bootstrap. So, it's using the Twitter bootstrap CSS file. But it replaced the good JavaScript code with Angular code. So, very similar. Um, it's, it's still the bootstrap CSS, and that's really the main component of that framework. And then, then I'm using a direct control engine to show I have this button over here, which opens up the scheduler. So there is actually a button here, which, which is currently getting running. It's used to have this test. But anyway, the scheduler we can change dates, save items, and currently the buttons in. We can't actually have items in the schedule. Really wasn't designed so for Oh, I spent so much time on layout building this, which a lot more than I anticipated. I didn't want to cover stuff like that at all, but I, I had to. So, but yes, layout is very challenging. We're, we're so blessed in Flex with all those lovely layout containers. The B group takes each group is the form container. 
cetera, et cetera. Right, being able to write everything out has to be but CSS everything seems to be even, even such a thing such as simple as getting the border around this. It, it looks a little better it's not of course of course it's such a small small screen resolution. But um, yeah that that is like a just to get the border to and in flex I just use the border container and fix the kind of um I've been kind of figuring it out on my own. Like uh yes so I know there's a bunch of stuff that's happening in the CSS space, just like there is in the JavaScript space. I've been going under the assumption if I'm actually on a project for a client, they'll have a specific designer on board, and I will have to deal with it the moment. <laughs> and maybe that won't be the case, but uh, so so far I'm not. So so I have focused focused my efforts on the CSS side of all that much. But there's a uh, similar to how there's a lot of JavaScript frameworks and libraries or CSS frameworks. Some CSS free parts that are using Sideshot. Less is one that comes to mind. Um, we can do like conditional stuff with CSS and have some coding and filter, filter compiler of some kind, which helps with the stuff that the browser actually recognizes conceptually similar to TypeScript stuff that um, I was talking about yesterday. Yeah, I spend a lot of time looking at jobs and things. And there's just so many out there. There's probably been 15 to 30 more during the Olympics presentation creation. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so yes, I have. But, um, there's so many of them, and really Angular seems to be getting the most traction. Which is that so many people are saying good things about it on, uh, on my Twitter. Uh, yes, yes. Angular is the culture. Uh, a few more sort of components there. Um, direct Angular directives just basically means you can create your own Angular JS components. Um, and not going to go into details on how to do that. Just a huge, huge topic on its own. But um, just a quick review. We spoke about what Angular is, why we think here. Uh, we spoke about modules and controllers in the context of an Angular application. We talked about the scope service and how to use it for binding and sort of collecting user input. Then we created our Angular service, talked about integrating it back in, and sort of a really brief overview of the components. Um, once again, go get my book, <laughs> my training course, lifehackflex.com. The books are available for free. And, and any questions? What, what did you say that component was called again? Which one for the data grid? What was? Um, NG grid is the data grid. And um, there's, there's actually a Angular like, UI library team, so I think that component actually comes directly from home. But, but it's separate. There are another. Yeah, I went to that website. Uh, I just couldn't figure out how to get the book. Uh, scroll to the bottom to so get what you want and put in zero. I have not used TypeScript in my book. There's just so much stuff out there, so much stuff to learn. So you have to hedge your bets sometimes. I don't know. So I noticed you're using IntelliJ for your HTML. Um, have you used their other web, uh, their other web specific product names? Oh, um, um, you mean WebStorm? Yeah, I believe WebStorm. it's called. I, I have not. From what I understand, is uh, WebStorm is really just just a subset of IntelliJ. So IntelliJ basically does everything, and uh, WebStorm is just focused. And I thought they had one just focused. They have a few other focused versions. Yeah, but I've been using the full fledged version. 
the complementary classes you have to learn things in the whole. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I think Alex is doing awesome work. Um, I haven't felt the EP was pushing me to create Angular and JS and Samuel FlexJS, which was on my list to see you, but it just wasn't going to happen before this conference. I wish I could show it off now. Um, so, so hopefully I can do that next time. Um, no, 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 because the way I understand how FlexJS is working, um, it, it's really just just a wrapper, um, a wrapper around HTML and JavaScript. So, so like um, they, he had his sort of uh, FlexJS body, which is just a wrapper around the body. And I know that there's other samples out, out there with FlexJS and other frameworks. Like for, for example, I, I think there was one called I forget what it was. So Zaz is take this code and modify it so it's just using JS instead of using jQuery or whatever. And I'm like, well, that sounds like an awesome idea, but I, I just don't know. So yeah, it's on my list to do. Watch my blog. <laughs> I'll probably, hopefully, I'll get to it sometime next month. Yeah, so, but um, the fear, the fear I have, is that by the time that's really production ready, it'll be too late. Yeah, like there, there's clients like Angular JS is huge right now, and I don't know how long it's that's the problem with all the other JavaScript. You know, two years ago, I thought I had to talk about jQuery. Yep. And that is just, my kid wants to create some JS. Oh, uh, like, yep. It's like the list just goes on and on. At least this one, you know which ships, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. watch which one. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have any response. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but yes, I understand. Yeah, see, the thing with JavaScript is, it's JavaScript is all open source in some manner, regardless of the license. So if you really need to, you can't make it change your JavaScript. So what about the core functions of the like, if, if, if the data binding uh, base serves for type of object, what's the Um, well, that, that's, let's talk a little bit about that. John, John's not going to be down here. So um, let's go. There's this network tag in Chrome, and I'll, I'll mark this completed. So there is the service request, and we can see the request headers, the form data that was part of the task method, task application, and completed value. We can see the response, which is a JSON object. I didn't really touch on the JSON. But doing stuff in you know, five ish world kind of like this JSON move away from the command. So it's, it, I can see what it's returning. Um, now I can also use, uh, is it there? Oh, here we go. And I also use this tool to hold service capture, which um, it'll give me the form parameters. And I use service capture a lot for plus too, actually. Um, service capture is an independent tool. Um, I, it could be Windows only. I'm not really sure. Oh, it's decent to stack. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, so like um, Charles is another alternative. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch out there. This is nice because it sort of gives me the objects. I can tell them what's returned. It's a little easier than uh, what's here. So that's if you're trying to put service capture. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yes. And Firefox has integrated tools too. And IE, I actually have looked at the IE tools. I know they have developer tools now. I don't know to what extent that has been done. What about Um, That I don't actually know. Because that, that's an area I've never actually had to look into. Because I've never. Never had clients 
care about talking about things. John just gave me ten more minutes. <laughs> 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 Zero. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> and there you go. It's ten